to partner with like-minded people who act on, on programs and issues such as the social action and different community interaction. So we didn't have to do that alone. There was a way to do that. And in addition to the internal spiritual growth, I've also had opportunities put my way to be a part of a group with and, and grow in different involvement and leadership skills over the years from the first invitation to be clerk of the then Powers Council, where I learned what the operation of a church was like, which was something that was very new to me. Over the years, I was a committee member and a chair of several committees. And then a few years ago, I joined the Board of Trustees first as vice chair, then as chair, something I found really daunting. I used to look at the people and said, I don't think I could do that. I looked at people who had done it and I succeeded some people who were really good at it. So it was kind of scary to take that on, but I was supported and I hope that I served um, ably. I also took on being part of the, the preservation group, something I knew nothing about and also kind of scary. I said, how can I do this? I don't know what I'm doing here. But working with other people, um, I was able to build confidence in myself to take on challenges that were new and strange to me. So I think that helped me grow, not only spiritually, which I'm still doing, but also as a person, and also in developing friendships and ties within my community. So in, it, over the 30 years, it's really, in, in many ways, affected and changed my life, positively, I hope. Thank you, Lynn. Please join me for our responsive reading written in your order of service and on the screen as well. Stand by this faith by Olympia Brown. Stand by this faith. Work for it and sacrifice for it. Which has comforted us in sorrow, strengthened us in noble duty and made the world more beautiful. that you are strong enough to work for a great true principle without counting the cost. May it be so. Hi, I'm Ross. I'm here again. Can you hear me all okay? Okay. Why is All Souls my connection to the web of life? Well, for starters, this is how Nancy and I have been connecting to All Souls Church by way of the World Wide Web to attend Sunday services and church meetings on Zoom. That is how we have been connected to the people of All Souls. And for us, the people of all souls are a huge part of the web of life. To us, all souls is unique for the community that it provides. From uh, the minute we first walked into the church, we were greeted with people who were exceptionally friendly, warm, sincere, and positive. It was unique in our experience. 
it is this feeling of community that we all love about this church and that is so meaningful to us. Another compelling reason, as uh, Lynn mentioned, is the opportunity to work on social justice and environmental issues with a dedicated group of like-minded, committed people. George Goss, as chair of the Social Action and Environment Committee, has been terrific in identifying key issues and helping us to focus on them. A third reason is the Sunday service. It is the time of respite and reflection, allowing us to slow down, take a breath, and renew our take on life to reconnect with the web of life. These are just some of the reasons why Nancy and I support all souls. Thank you. Thank you and welcome back everyone. It's nice to see bodies here. Um, so um, I'm here to just provide an update regarding the status of our leadership situation. Um, so we have a number of leadership vacancies that are up for renewal um, come our annual meeting in June. Most of the vacancies are on the Board of Trustees. And um, to let people know that um, we have, the Board of Trustees has been struggling to find a nominating committee chairperson. So at this late stage in the game, we've decided to just continue the way we've been operating without a committee chairperson. We do have one committee member and um, the second committee member is Sal. So obviously he's not able to participate in the process. Um, so we're, we're running behind. And um, to let you know, the um, positions that are up for renewal are the chairperson, the vice chairperson, the clerk, and we have two trustee at large positions, as well as we have vacancies um, for the um, Sunday Service and Music Committee chairperson, and also the building and grounds chairperson. And we have been without a finance committee chairperson for quite a while. Um, on the other side of things, we do have people who currently serve in some of these positions that have agreed to renew for another two year term. Um, one of the Linda, for example, is offered to renew as a trustee at large position. Ross is offered to renew as the vice chairperson of the board. Um, John is offered to renew as building and grounds, but also we have another candidate who's willing to also serve in that leadership position as well. Um, and for me personally, I'm at a crossroads at this point. Um, I don't know, I've been serving as chairperson and also during the board meetings, I've been serving as the clerk. So I'm wearing, trying to take notes at the same time, trying to organize the meeting and agenda. 
um, offer the same pay, which of course is free. Um, so we're, you know, we're getting close to the time, you know, for our annual meeting and getting reports done and, um, you know, preparing the ballots. And um, so I do want to say thank you to the Board of Trustees for all of their assistance and thank you to everyone who has offered to either candidate or also to um, who's offered to renew for another two year term. Um, if anyone is interested in any of the positions or you would like to know what the positions are, um, please feel free to contact myself or a member of the board. Um, I know we're just, we're just kind of behind the eight ball at this late stage in the game. And, um, you know, we, we do need people to govern our church. Um, otherwise we would have to come up with some other way in trying to, um, you know, operate the leadership functioning of our church. Um, so if anybody's interested in finding out more about these positions, then I say, please feel free to contact me or a uh, member of the board of trustees. Thank you. Thank you, Joe, for your leadership and for bringing us up to speed on the vacancies available. Um, I just want to reiterate how untenable it is for Joe to, or anyone for that matter, to facilitate a board meeting and take the minutes. And I think that's the um, that's the big stumbling block at this point. If somebody could step forward to be clerk, I think that there would be people happily to renew, but uh, it's 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 not tenable to do both jobs. So thank you, Joe. Each week we have an opportunity to give thanks for the blessings we have received in our lives and in the life of our church community. Our morning offering is a chance to give back in support of the work and outreach of our church. You may submit your offering electronically by following the link in the chat, or you may mail it to All Souls Church at the address also provided in the chat. And I'm seeing two ushers in the back of the sanctuary with offering plates. So it looks like we're gonna take a real old fashioned offering. Okay, I didn't know that. <laughs> Another surprise. At this time, our morning offering will be given and received. Thank you. Oh, the proportions are all wrong. <laughs> I don't feel tall enough. <laughs> okay. Um, 
So there's a story about a visiting preacher who was really getting the congregation moving. And near the end of her sermon, she said, this church has really got to walk. To which someone in the back yelled, let her walk, preacher, let her walk. Then the preacher said, if this church is going to go, it's got to get up and run. To which someone again yelled with gusto, let her run, preacher, let her run. Feeling the surge of enthusiasm in the congregation, the preacher then said with an even louder voice, if this church is going to go, it's really got to fly. And once again, with even greater gusto, someone in the back yelled, let her fly, preacher, let her fly. Then the preacher seized the moment and stated with even greater gusto, if this church is really going to fly, it's going to need money. To which someone in the back yelled, let her walk, preacher, let her walk. I don't tell jokes in the pulpit very often. But I offer this one as a reflection on how ministers and congregations seldom like to talk about money. And since we're all here, we might as well laugh about it. Having been raised in the Catholic Church, I was accustomed to putting change in the collection basket. I was. I was little, three years old, and I was doing it. And in fact, back then in the 50s, each usher had a helper, if you can imagine this, with a canvas bag the size of a pillowcase so that the usher could dump the contents of the basket in the bag and then continue to collect the offering at further, further down the aisle. I, I just can't imagine how long it took them to count all that money. <laughs> But it was never my money that went into the basket. It was spare change my parents had put in my hand. And once I left the Catholic Church, I didn't affiliate with any other faith tradition or congregation. It was 10 years before I discovered Unitarian Universalism. And when I decided to join the congregation, I was living on less than $30,000 a year. Money was always scarce, despite how frugal I was, or how many roommates I had. So when I asked, so when I was asked to make a pledge, I offered my time and talent in abundance. By the third year, however, <laughs> I was asked to participate on the stewardship planning committee, something totally beyond my comfort zone and provide a testimonial as Lynn and Ross did today on Stewardship Sunday. And what I found was once I was able to articulate what the congregation, its ministry and its mission meant to me, I experienced a sudden shift in allegiance from my financial reserves to supporting the church's mission. I will never forget how powerful it was to invest my money in my church home, the spiritual center of my life. Years later, as I prepared for seminary, a friend and former member of the stewardship committee who had witnessed my transformation asked if I would continue to pledge my support to the congregation once I left. And I replied emphatically, Yes, because it was the best way I had found to make the world a better place. My desire to financially support the mission of my home church was so compelling. I imagine it must be like a parent wanting to give their child the world. I will never forget that feeling. 
And perhaps that's how some of you feel about All Souls Church too. Our stewardship theme this year is nurturing the web of life. And I appreciate the way the slogan is a play on words. All Souls Church has nurtured our beloved community throughout the pandemic. Thanks to the web of virtual opportunities, we have had to remain connected on Sunday mornings and through the ministry of various small groups during the week. I also like how it calls upon us to live out our seventh principle with respect for the interdependent web of which we are a part. One of the main tenets of our faith is that we are all connected. And when one of us suffers, we all suffer. This is the underpinning of our work for social justice and our commitment here at All Souls to being a green sanctuary. How we nurture the web of life at All Souls and in the world depends on each of us. Like the tree of life, the logo for this year's stewardship season, your contributions of time, talent, and treasure will determine whether and how this beloved tree of life we call all souls will grow in the coming year. When I think about the tree of life as a metaphor for our church community, I imagine the tree trunk represents our building, which includes the cost of utilities, building security, general maintenance, repairs, and historic preservation. Also part of the trunk is the administration of our church activities, which includes internal communications through our monthly newsletter and weekly e-blasts and external communications that promote Unitarian Universalism and All Souls Church through our website, our Facebook page, our YouTube channel, and our Wayside Pulpit. In addition to all of this, the tree trunk also represents the management of our assets, which includes our staff, our operating budget, rental income, payroll accounting, and investment management. And to manage all of this activity in the trunk of the tree is our board of trustees. The branches of the tree represent the ministry of the church, which we identified at our board retreat as the four aspects of our mission. And the leaves, oh, I love the leaves. The leaves of the tree represent our volunteers. They are the photosynthesizers who reinvigorate each branch of the tree of life by building community, engaging in spiritual exploration, lifelong learning, and making a difference in the world. No volunteers, none of that happens. You guys are the church. And the roots, the roots of the tree represent our financial and programmatic resources that nourish the tree and support our mission. Our treasures include pledges, donations, morning offering, rental income, and any returns on our investments. Other resources offered by the UUA and its affiliate organizations include programs on leadership development, lifespan education, strategies for small congregations, how to do virtual worship, Black Lives Matter materials, Soul Matters, Worship Web, and so much more. These resources, like nutrients in the soil, 
are absorbed through the root hairs of the tree and rise up through the trunk and spread to all its branches in service of our mission. When I look at the cross section of a tree trunk, I see generations of ancestors represented in each ring that emanates from the center of the tree, which I think is aptly called the heart wood. And I imagine the sap wood near the outer layer as the current generation that gives life to the tree. And the cambium just below the bark represents the administration of the church that promotes new growth in the tree. And the bark, the bark of the tree represents the exterior of our building that contains all the past, present, and future activity of this beloved community. All souls and Unitarian Universalism have a great deal to offer a world disenchanted with dogma and doctrine of organized religion. As a covenantal faith tradition guided by our seventh principles and our six sources, we provide spiritual community for all who engage in a quest for truth and meaning on life's journey. That is so priceless in value. So priceless in value that I have dedicated my life to it. So I leave you with a question. How will you sustain this marvelous tree of life called All Souls in 2023? And with these words by Rebecca Parker. Your gifts, whatever you discover them to be, can be used to bless or curse the world. The mind's power, the strength of our hands, the reaches of our hearts, the gift of speaking listening, imagining, seeing, or waiting. Any of these can serve to feed the hungry, bind up wounds, welcome the stranger, praise what is sacred, do the work of justice, or offer love. Any of these can draw down the prison door, hoard bread, abandon the poor, obscure what is holy, comply with injustice, or withhold love. You must answer the question, what will you do with your gifts? Choose to bless the world. The choice to bless the world is more than an act of will, a moving forward into the world with the intention to do good. It is an act of recognition, a confession of surprise, a grateful acknowledgement that in the midst of a broken world, unspeakable beauty, grace, and mystery abide. There is an embrace of kindness that encompasses all life. And while there is injustice and anesthetization or evil, there moves a holy disturbance, a benevolent rage, a revolutionary love, protesting, urging, insisting, that which is sacred will not be defiled. Those who bless the world 
live their life as a gesture of thanks for this beauty and this rage. The choice to bless the world can take you into solitude to search for the sources of power and grace, be it native wisdom, healing, or liberation. But more, the choice will draw you into community, will draw you into the endeavor shared, the heritage passed on, the companionship of struggle, the importance of keeping faith, the life of ritual and praise, the comfort of human friendship, the company of the earth, the chorus of life welcoming you. None of us alone can save the world. Together, that is another possibility waiting. May it be so. Our closing hymn is number 1028 in your teal hymnal, The Fire of Commitment. closing words are by Theodore Parker. May ours be a religion which like sunshine goes everywhere. Its temple 
all space, its shrine, the good heart, its creed, all truth, its ritual works of love, and its profession of faith, divine living. Blessed be, and have a wonderful afternoon. As we extinguish the flame of this chalice, may each of us carry its light into every day of our lives. We wish to give special thanks today to our participants in this morning's service. Uh, church usher was Linda Cousins. Our virtual usher and also our Zoom host today was Mary Mitchell. I was a ser your service associate, Ross Edwards. Our readers and speakers were Lynn Steiner and Joe Maloney. Music director, Jacob Clapper. Thank you for your music, Jacob. And our minister, Reverend Bo Rivers. Upcoming events this week include uh, the Connection Circles at 4 p.m. on Tuesdays, which is open conversation, and 10 a.m. Fridays, uh, March 18th, uh, it will be the Universal uh, Unitarian Universalism, Past, Present, Future. Author and activist Desmond Mead will make a presentation. And it will be, a, that is the 2021 UUA General Assembly Ware Lecture, part two. And the writing group will be meeting on Zoom at 4 p.m. on Wednesday, March 30th. And now I invite you to stay on screen for our virtual coffee hour. And for those of you here in the parish, uh, in the church, uh, our coffee hour in the parish hall with food and uh, uh, and uh, our, ourselves <laughs> together at last. We thank you for being here with us this morning. Have a great week. Oh, and I encourage those of you who in person are here in the parish hall for coffee hour for the first 15 minutes afterwards we are also going to have a virtual coffee hour hosted by mary and i encourage people from the parish hall to come in and make connections with those people who are sharing the coffee hour on zoom thank you all